Welcome to our time of worship and meditation together on this 18th Sunday after Pentecost, the last Sunday in September. You'll notice I'm in a different environment than usual. I'm at our communications coordinator's house apartment to do the video this day because he was not feeling well and did not want to go and spread his infection around to others. So I've come to his house to share the good news with you. And I invite you now, in the beginning of autumn of this year, to share with me our call to worship. Let us share together. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. 
Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has saved you from your enemies. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for his, all his wonderful deeds to them. Those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. And as we gather this day, we do not have our regular candles, but we have a light, a light that shines in the darkness and a light that enlightens us. And as we gather this day, we share the light of Christ in our lives, the light of Christ that brings greetings to us of hope, help, and healing. And I invite you now as we gather here at Robert's apartment and at your home to share the shalom of Christ, that is the well-being of Christ, the presence of Christ, the love of Christ, the caring of Christ, the peace of Christ with each other through the airwaves and with those who are at home. Shalom, shalom in Christ. Shalom this day in the peace of Christ. And as we gather this day, we do not have the, our regular candles, but the light again does shine for us. And we recall that each Sunday we light the Shalom candle, the peace candle of Christ, to remind us of that light shining in the darkness and the darkness not overcoming it. So this day we do it a little bit more mechanically, but shine the light, the light of Christ's presence and peace. And in doing so, I invite you now to share with me our prayer of preparation for this day. Let us pray to give, together. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon him. Sing praises to his name in the name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to praise you. We come, down, we come to bow down before you and ask forgiveness for our sins. We are your children. We are not worthy, yet your love pours down around us each and every day. Help us to share with others the love you share with us. Give us the strength to stand up in the name of Jesus. This is our prayer and praise. Amen, amen, and amen. It is so. Amen.
Our scripture lessons this day are actually about prayer. Single lines of scripture about the nature of prayer and its purpose. Two are from the Hebrew text and three are from the Christian text. The first is Psalm 54, verse 2. And this is David saying this prayer. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. And from Psalm 65, O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. And then Jesus in Matthew 21, 22 saying, Whatever you ask for in prayer, with faith you will receive. And then Paul's writing in Romans 11, I'm sorry, Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. And the last one is from the letter of James, the fifth chapter, 16th verse. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Prayer is an important tool of our faith. It is our way of speaking to God, of God listening to us, and us hearing God. And as I ask this day, as we gather to lift up our hearts and minds, that as we have heard this spoken word, it is transferred in your minds to a living word, word of faith and hope, a word of prayer. Prayer is again the gathering, the sharing of our thoughts and experiences, of hearing and listening, one of my favorite prayers, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, is what's called the Serenity Prayer. It has many different versions. It was originally attributed, and still is attributed, to Reinhold Niebuhr, a major Protestant theologian and ethicist who taught at Union Seminary for his career. He was also a pastoral minister in this prayer, which he gives, it was actually, I understand, a benediction. And it is often used in recovery programs to affirm people, to affirm their recovery. There is a short version which we are all familiar with. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and courage to change the things I can. There is a longer version, and it's one that I use when I do my prayers each day as a beginning of my prayer cycle. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, experiencing joy one moment at a time, accepting hardships as pathways to peace. Taking as you did this world as it is and not as I want it to be. Trusting and surrendering to your will, you will make all things right, that I'll be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you in the next. May God's presence be with you as we do this time of meditation. There was a critic who said about this prayer, this, the first part, it's in black and white. It's uncertainties. I disagree with that. Actually, the issues in life are not because of being black or white. It's about being gray. We get lost often in the fog of life, the grayness of life, the uncertainties in life. And both black and white are forms of light, which can be a guide and a healing. And again, as the prayer says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. God, allow me to have, how to say this, peace of mind in uncertainty. To realize there are some things in life I have no control over. And to, in a sense, 
not just accept but let go of it. God grant me the strength to accept the things I cannot change. For there are many things in my life I cannot change. And rather than mulling over it or worrying over it or being impatient over it, to let it go. And the second part again is the courage to change the things I can. Faith, prayer, are acts of courage to give us strength to overcome the moments. And the third part is the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, to know the difference, to be able to use that knowledge of acceptance, courage, serenity, to know the parts of my life that I can live at the greatest peace with the world around me and with my Savior and my God. As many of you know, I do not like to fly airplanes. I really dislike it. In one summer, I went through three separate incidences in airplane flights, which I'll not go into, and many of them know it. But it left me with a feeling I do not have to fly again. I do not want to fly again. A little over a year ago, actually not this past week, but a year winter before, I was in Winnipeg, Canada. It's one of my places I enjoy being at, and I wanted to be there in winter to see how I could take it, because one of my goals in life is to see the Northern Lights, and Winnipeg is a stopping off point. There was a railroad strike in Canada those weeks, and it wasn't ending. So all train travel was cut off. There's no bus travel to Winnipeg. And the only other way of getting out of Winnipeg is to fly. I had to make a decision. I need to get back to Yonkers, my life here, to my work and ministry. So I chose to fly. I was surprised how I handled it. One is, as I got on the airplane, and I must confess, it was packed. It was four hours late leaving Winnipeg. But as I said effectively, the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. I couldn't change the situation. I couldn't change the experience. And being anxious and worrying about it is not going to change anything. And the second part was the courage. I actually did this. I actually took the airplane and said, in effect, God, whatever happens, I'm in your hands. I don't think I would have done that 15 or 20 years ago. But I did it that day, and I got through it. The wisdom is to know the difference between my actions and God's presence with me, to understand it. And as the longer version says, living one day at a time. Right now we're in the middle of a massive pandemic, which is at epic proportions again and even affecting our area. Living the day in the day as has been planned for us. Living this day and getting through it. Experiencing joy one moment at a time. Last week we had a simple time of going apple picking. Many of us have arrived at different times, but we went to a different place and we picked some apples, and that was a joyful moment. Accepting hardships as pathways to peace. There have been difficult times in my life, in my journey, like that airplane fight. 
It was a sense of hardship. That's what I want to do. But I passed through it. Each of us can pass through our hardships to find that serenity, that courage, that wisdom. We can pass through the moment and come out the other side. One way of saying is one door closes, another door opens. The way of saying is we simply pass through it. And then it says in the prayer, taking as you did the world as it is and not as I want it to be. The world can be a place of uncertainty. But Jesus took it as a place of transformation and renewal and life, and that was his ministry. And hopefully I can find that presence with my Lord each and every day. Trusting and surrendering my will. Surrendering is not giving up, it is giving over. You will make all things right, correct for me, even in those last moments of my journey, that I'll be reasonably happy in this life. And I have found in the present journeys, I have that reasonableness of happiness and supremely happy with you when my new journey begins. May God be with you. May God grant you serenity, courage, peace, joy, life. May God bless you and keep you as we gather together by this video for the present time until we can meet again face to face. And as we close this day, I will ask that we remember in prayer all who have died from this disease we may, we may know, lift up all those who mourn, who've had the sadness and pain in their lives, to remember those in prayer who have a birthday this month, September, and to pray for ourselves and for others we love and others we may disagree with, that there can be reconciliation and healing. And I would suggest as our pastoral prayer, we say the Lord's Prayer. I'm sorry to say together the serenity prayer, saying together, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, experiencing joy one moment at a time, accepting hardships as pathways to peace, taking as you did this world as it is and not as I want it to be. Trusting and surrendering to your will, you'll make all things right, that I shall be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you in the next. Amen. Now I invite you to share with me our Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I thank you for being with us today. I thank Robert for persevering through this moment with his illness. 
I thankful for those who came to our apple picking time. As I said, not, not all together, but we got there and had fun. And God's blessing be with those who are having a birthday this month. And may you have peace, serenity, courage, and wisdom each and every day. And as we close this day, our time together, I invite you to share with me our benediction from Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercies endure forever. Go in peace.